Assalamu alaikum dear students, uh, I'm your course instructor Dr. Mazullah Khan. Uh, today we will cover the last topic, actually we will complete uh, our last topic of the course which is environmental impact assessment. So let's uh, proceed. Okay, so if you remember in my last lecture we covered the first four bullets and today we will cover mostly talk about how do we perform the environmental impact assessment okay so environmental impact assessment it's a study to predict okay the effect of a proposed activity or project on the environment and the reason we use the word predict because we are doing environmental impact assessment studies for proposed projects, okay? So the projects which will happen actually in the future. So environmental impact assessment, it's a study to predict the effect of proposed activity or project on the environment. It's a decision-making tool as well, okay? And it's a decision-making tool because it compares various alternatives okay for the project and it identifies an alternative which represents the best combination of economic and environmental cost and benefits as i told you in my last lecture that every project has some negative externalities uh, environmental impact assessment the whole exercise is done is actually to minimize those negative externalities what environmental impact assessment uh, does it compares various alternatives and based on your evaluation you pick the right alternative and from right alternative what I mean is the alternative which is the best combination of economic and environmental cost and benefits now EIA applies to the assessment of environmental effects okay of those public and private sector projects which are likely to have a significant effects on the environment okay so the purpose of this bullet point is that in countries like Pakistan environmental impact assessment are not done for each and every project okay they are done only for those projects which may have a significant effects on the environment and as you will see from the last part of this lecture that there are some projects okay uh, in certain sectors of course uh, they need actually all of them they need uh, environmental impact assessment so not every project needs environmental impact assessment but environmental impact assessment studies are normally done for those projects which have a significant effects on um, the environment now project can be any construction project so execution of construction works or any other installations okay so projects normally entails construction work or installations okay other interventions in the natural surroundings or landscape including those involving the extraction of minerals okay so besides construction works and installation extraction of minerals in some areas it is kind of an intervention okay so you are trying to actually uh, what's this called uh, modify the ecosystem of a certain uh, area okay by extracting uh, the minerals so impact evaluations uh, environmental impact uh, assessments are also done for uh, those projects which involves extraction of minerals okay the environmental effects okay so what we need to know is actually the nature of the environmental effect okay so for example is the negative externality in terms of co2 emission or is it let's say uh, the uh, in the form of industrial waste or chemicals okay environmental effects also uh, means like the size of the problem and the location okay so it's nature size and location direct and indirect effects of the project on the following factors okay 
so there may be some direct and indirect effects okay on human beings fauna and flora which is like the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom soil water air climate and the landscape okay and interaction of all these factors okay and it also involves material assets and the cultural heritage so for example uh, uh, in countries uh, for example in Canada there are some uh, indigenous communities so whenever a government tries to uh, start a project in those indigenous communities they conduct uh, the environmental impact assessment in one in which one of the main component is actually not to disturb the cultural uh, heritage of those uh, areas okay so it, it is an important uh, part of environmental uh, impact assessment okay so in Pakistan initial environment examination is required if to check if a particular project need an environmental impact assessment okay so those projects are included in schedule one okay everything included in schedule two they need environmental impact assessment for schedule one what you do you conduct an initial environmental examination environment examination okay and based on the finding of this initial environment examination if it warrants further uh, assessment of the uh, impact you conduct a complete environmental impact assessment okay but let's say if this initial environment examination suggests that the full-scale environmental impact assessment study is not required then of course you do not carry out that uh, study okay so in schedule one projects initial environmental examination is done okay and based on the finding of that report you either conduct the EIA or you just ignore it okay so it really depends on the recommendations of the initial environment uh, examination report schedule two projects though each and every project requires environmental impact assessment now list of the projects which requires environmental impact assessment agriculture livestock and fishing energy manufacturing and processing mining and mineral processing transport, water management, dams, irrigation, and flood protection, water supply and treatment, okay, water disposal, okay, urban development and tourism, okay, all these projects need environmental impact assessment. In countries like Pakistan, sometimes what really happens that some foreign international donors are involved uh, in these projects. So they are actually providing funding for these projects. For example, World Bank or Asian Development Bank. So one of the requirements of those donor, not donor actually, they, they, they give us uh, loans, of those lending institutions, one of the requirement is that we have to conduct environmental impact uh, assessment. Okay. Sometimes it is also, the, 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 the requirement of EIA is also coming from the either donor or the lender. Now these are the key steps in environmental impact uh, study assessment. Okay, so everything starts with proposal identification. Okay, so let's say if a government, whether municipal government, provincial and federal government, if they would like to start a project, okay, normally it start with the proposal stage. Okay that proposal is screened in other words it is evaluated okay and if the EIA is required okay so you start here okay but some of the project as I told you in on one of my slides okay if the project is in schedule one okay it does not necessarily require EIA okay so you conduct initial environmental examination if based on initial environmental examination, if no EIA is required, okay, that's fine. You just stop here. But let's say if the IEE, which is the initial environmental examination, if it suggests that it needs 
EIA, okay? So you start this process here, okay? So if we, whenever we establish that the environmental impact assessment is required, the next stage is scoping, okay? And I'll talk about what scoping actually entails. Then in the next step, we do impact analysis, okay? And in the impact analysis, we also include mitigation and impact management, okay? All these components actually form the EIA report, okay? The next stage would be review. So a regulator or the public actually reviews the report, okay? And then make a decision, okay? So the decision can be either approved approved which is here or not approved okay if it is not approved okay you cycle back you redesign the project and resubmit it for evaluation okay but let's say if the decision is that the project is approved then of course you go to implementation stage and post EIA monitoring okay now the involvement of public as I was talking in my last lecture it is extremely important okay it really helps public uh, uh, not okay let me choose my words uh, properly so it creates actually ownership among the public for the project okay and the people think that okay whatever the project is uh, being carried out uh, the government or let's say the private uh, company they are really valuing their uh, feedback so the public involvement or feedback can be either involved in the scoping stage or in the review stage but there is no rule of thumb you can actually involve public's uh, opinion in the scoping stage as well as in the review or in one of these okay so there is no rule of thumb okay so let's talk about uh, scoping I initial actually environmental uh, examination so the screening process it results in the production of environmental screening summary note okay so forget about uh, these uh, jargons okay the most important thing is that the initial environmental examination it includes brief project description so it describes the project okay environmental issues apparent at the screening okay so they highlight the environmental issues okay involved in this project significance of environmental impacts risk and or benefits okay so the significance of environmental impact risk and benefits are also highlighted in this report okay and the environmental investigation is proposed if it is proposed it means that we have to go to environmental impact assessment okay uh, it also let's say uh, uh, any other issues can also be uh, highlighted and then of course it highlights uh, the actions which needs to be taken one of the actions may be that it actually recommends either the regulator the government or the lender to carry out a full-scale environmental impact assessment study so as I told you in one of my slides that the initial environmental uh, environment examination is done uh, on schedule one projects in Pakistan okay and if it recommends okay then we do environmental impact uh, assessment okay the full scale one now scoping scoping and I'll read through it because these are very very uh, easy to understand okay so ob the objectives of the scoping are to enhance the environmental benefits okay so that's one of the main purpose to ensure compliance with relevant local legislation okay to consider the alternatives to the proposed that should be examined okay so consider the alternatives to the proposal that should be examined like for example if if the proposal in Pakistan is to uh, for example build a railway track okay so we can connect uh, different cities okay so we can choose different uh, routes for it okay um, so the the scoping of the uh, environmental impact assessment study it also touch upon the alternatives to the proposal that okay okay we are uh, we are evaluating this uh, proposal in terms of uh, impact uh, on it 
on the environment but there are some other alternatives okay so scoping may also consider alternatives to the proposal to identify any significant adverse environmental uh, effects and identify action okay so this is the mitigation part okay so scoping identifies okay the adverse environmental effects but it also identifies the corrective action, actions okay uh, to provide for public consultation and input to the identification of issues to be examined okay so scoping actually provides an opportunity for the public to provide their input to define the data needs and field survey activities scoping actually define the data needs okay so for example what would be the impact of the proposed uh, project okay in order to quantify uh, that uh, impact you need uh, data okay so scoping actually defines the data okay to determine the predictive uh, techniques and it also uh, tells you about the techniques that the study is using for predictive analytics process of scoping okay so prepare a scope outline okay develop the outline through informal consultation with environmental and health authorities okay you make the outline available okay you make the outline available to the public because it is extremely important uh, that you get their feedback uh, not only from the public but also from other agencies okay or companies compile an extensive list of concerns okay so this is like a brainstorming uh, stage where you compile ext extensive list of concerns you evaluate relevant concerns to establish key issues okay so this is like more of a uh, brainstorming uh, uh, step okay the evaluation part is more of an analytical step where we analyze all the concerns and then we identify the key issues organize key issues into impact categories okay amend the outline accordingly okay and develop terms of reference okay for the impact analysis and then you monitor the progress okay so terms of reference is extremely important okay so based on the feedback that you receive from the public and other agencies okay we identify key issues okay we organize them and we then develop terms of reference okay so the terms of reference actually defines the scope of the project okay uh, of course you have to limit the scope of your project so terms of reference is really about uh, actually defining the scope of that uh, project now the scope outcomes what does the scope uh, uh, scoping does so scoping identifies key issues and impacts to be considered okay so it actually identifies key issues and impacts Okay, it lays down the foundation of an effective process, saves time and money, and reduces conflict. Okay, because once you uh, identify issues, once you identify the potential impacts of those uh, issues, okay, and once you uh, suggest corrective actions, it reduces the chances of any conflict. Now, impact analysis. Now, impact analysis, okay, whether the impact is biophysical, social, or is the impact, let's say, uh, in terms of health or uh, economic, economic loss or economic gain, okay? And what is the nature of impact? Is it direct or indirect or cumulative, okay? So sometimes, uh, you cannot see the direct impact of a certain project okay but it has some indirect uh, implications okay especially uh, in the biophysical space okay because these projects has some long term uh, impacts okay and it can uh, certainly for example endanger some species let's say for example if we are talking about large projects like dams okay or even highways okay so it may have a direct or indirect implications on the 
different habitat or bio biophysical space. Okay, and what is the magnitude of that uh, impact? So based on um, their experience, actually they uh, categorize them as high, low, or moderate. Okay. Uh, extent. Okay. So is the impact? Okay. Are the implications local, regional, or transboundary? So I was talking to you about a gas pipeline between uh, US and Canada. Now that particular project has transboundary, okay, uh, implications. Okay, so the implications are not limited to one country. Okay, and it may have some global implications as well. Timing. So is the impact itself? Is the uh, negative or the positive effects? realizable immediately or will these impacts be in the long term okay and are these like let's say temporary or permanent okay and so uncertainty okay for example a certain uh, let's say negative impact for example how likely is that okay what is the likelihood of that so for example if I think we had um, a big issue, in my opinion, that was in Japan, uh, because as a result of earthquake, uh, one of their nuclear plants actually uh, had uh, developed some serious problems. Okay, so although those nuclear plants, I'm sure they must have done their environmental impact uh, study, and the uh, chances of whatever happened as a result of uh, that uh, earthquake it it might have been a low likelihood uh, event okay uh, but things happen okay so once you identify something in the environmental impact assessment okay you also uh, assign uh, the probability to it whether it's a low likelihood uh, event or is it a high probability event okay reversibility are the negative effects let's say reversible or they are irreversible in nature okay because these will have different implications okay significance are uh, is are they significant okay uh, so from significant means are these events let's say important or less important okay now checklist matrix okay geographical information system expert systems and professional judgment are used as a tool for impact identification okay so we use all these uh, three tools uh, including professional judgment okay for impact uh, identification now mitigation and impact management now framework for impact mitigation avoidance okay so alternative sites or technology to eliminate habitat loss. So as I was talking to, let's say, if a government, whether provincial or uh, federal government, if they would like to, let's say, build a dam, okay, and the environmental impact assessment study uh, suggests that the impact will be huge in terms of, let's say, habitat loss, okay, so your next question is, can we avoid this particular project? Okay, you just, uh, let's say, change the site of your project or you do some modifications. So, you try to find out whether alternative sites or technology is available to eliminate the habitat loss. Okay, is the loss avoidable in that way, in other words. Okay. Now, actions during design, construction, and operation to minimize or eliminate habitat loss, okay? So, yes, you identify habitat loss, okay? You acknowledge it, but now you try to uh, provide some mitigation strategies, okay? So, avoidance is not an option. You are trying to mitigate it now, okay? In other words, you are trying to minimize its uh, impact, okay? Compensation, okay, what really does, it's used as a last resort to offset the habitat loss, okay, so you provide compensation. 
So for example, in, 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 in social sphere, if a dam is resulting in, let's say, uh, loss to somebody's uh, property, for example, let's say it's a physical property, house or anything, okay? What you do, you provide compensation to them, okay? Now, moving actually from down to up, okay, this is a more desirable area, okay? Anything which can be avoided, of course, it is more desirable. Okay, but things which cannot be avoided, then you provide compensation for them. Okay, and it's a less desirable situation. Okay. Okay, the EIA report. Now, the EIA, the Environmental Impact Assessment Report, normally it entails the description of the project. So the project is described. An outline of the main alternatives. Okay, so what are alternatives available to this project okay so an outline of the main alternatives studied by the developer and an indication of the main reasons for this choice okay so it also highlights the areas where uh, the main alternatives are described okay and then it also highlights those areas the main reasons actually that why this particular choice has been chosen this particular alternative has been chosen Okay, a description of the likely significant environmental effects of the proposed project. Okay, so you identify and recognize, okay, the significant environmental effects. Okay, in fact, this is the main point of the EIA report. Okay, you measure to prevent, reduce, and possibly offset the adverse environmental effect. Okay, so either you try to prevent, okay, in that case, it will be like avoidance. Reduction would be mitigation and possibly offset the adverse environmental effects. This would be the uh, compensation part of it. Okay, a non-technical summary. Then, of course, you since since uh, one of the main reasons you are writing the in, uh, environmental impact assessment report is actually to share it with the regulators and public. So you also write a non-technical summary. Okay, which is like for consumption of general public. An indication of any difficulties, technical deficiencies, or lack of know-how encountered while compiling the required information. Okay, so let's say if as a consultant, if you face any problem, which may be in the form of technical deficiency or know-how, okay, you acknowledge that. Okay, and you say that okay, although I have this information, but I cannot comment on this one. Okay, so rather than ignoring it. Okay, you acknowledge it, you acknowledge your lack of know-how, you acknowledge your lack of technical deficiency, okay, and then you move on. Okay, so the last part of the, uh, of the, of this actual flow chart is actually review, decision making, okay, and then of course if the decision is not to approve, you cycle back, you redesign the project and resubmit it, okay, for review. I'll stop here. Uh, today's topic was not that difficult. It was very intuitive. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Please contact me at my email at mazulla at gk.edu.pk. Uh, I thank you very much for your attention and have a wonderful time.